Hey, Paul, how's it going? Um, I'm fine, thank you. Um, so for anybody who hasn't seen Paul before, Paul has joined the Alpha team recently at Darwin X, and uh, he also happens to be the Darwin manager, uh, manager behind Darwin CBY, is it? That's right. Your username is ZFX, I believe, so a lot of people yes. will be familiar with that. Paul uh, brings with him a lot of background and expertise uh, in uh, development around financial trading. He's got extensive experience in doing so. And uh, given that he has intimate knowledge of the Darwin asset, he's also one of the few people who's very passionate about leveraging the Darwin data set for Alpha. That's right. All right. So um, Paul and I have been uh, having discussions recently about building uh, a backtesting framework and solution uh, mm -hmm. using the Darwin data set to really enable people to go past the using just filters to isolate Darwin's at this point in time to using historical data that the Darwin API and the FTP repositories provide to do more in-depth, more exhaustive backtesting and research, right? That's right. So in this series of tutorials, it'll be multi-segmented. So we'll have several sub-series within this series. But what we'll do is we'll start off um, and continue actually from where we started last year when we were doing initial usage and implementation tutorials, as those who've been following that content will know, um, centered around how to tap into the Darwin data set, how to implement the REST API functionality in their applications. We did all of that primarily in Python to make it as accessible as possible to as wide an audience as possible at that point in time, given the resources we had. So, Paul, where are we going to start this uh, whole journey of building the back tester from? What, what is the first essential component we need to have in place before we can do anything about back testing? So today, we will first of all um, see a, a running application that will be written in C Sharp. Um, and after that, uh, I will explain you step by step how to build this by your own. Because there are mm -hmm. some, some small things you have to, uh, to know about the, the API and uh, how to use it to build um, your own um, applications. You don't have to build your own backtester that will be done by us, but uh, with mm -hmm. the possibilities we will share. And here. all of this will be open source. So it'll all be shared on the GitHub repository at DarwinX. So anybody following these tutorials can download the source code as we are progressing in this tutorial series. So I think people will yeah, really benefit from this iterative sharing of source code as we go along. You mentioned something about the necessity to to have the data side sorted first. So what are your considerations there? Like, what is the very first thing uh, as um, a financial developer that you need to consider when building a solution like this, like in yeah. terms of data, so? Yeah, that's a good, a good question. So maybe go back to the his, to my personal history, why mm -hmm. I decided to, to go into this business. Um, yeah. So a few years ago, I just saw there are some ads somewhere on the web uh, where it was told that you can write own applications uh, that you can backtest and uh, run on financial data. So it was MetaTrader and I thought, wow, what a great idea. I was just a developer. I had no a uh, deep understanding of the financial market, uh, especially the Forex market. But I've decided to um, to just have a look and see what I can do there. So it was easy for me to learn the language or the, the, the code base I need, but uh, it was a hard part to get all this knowledge about the trading um, or all the, the necessary information you need to start there. And I think, the same situation is here at Darwin X. Um, we have a great um, product. We have an own asset class where we can trade uh, products like uh, like <laughs> any other product. asset class, yeah, right? I mean, like if, any if you're other used to forex, um, stocks, indices, commodities, yes. uh, the Darwin asset serves as another tradable asset. And from a researcher's yeah. perspective, yet another financial time series that yes. can be researched for alpha generation and signal generation purposes, just like any other asset. So that's, yes. that's one of the key motivations for this whole exercise, isn't it? To really demonstrate that the Darwin asset 
uh, in terms of being a financial time series is no different to any other asset class that you're already familiar with. Yeah. And for me, the most important stuff is uh, as an algo trader, I'm an algo trader, to have the possibility to see if my um, idea or my uh, algorithm would be um, profitable on um, back uh, test data, I mean on old data, historic data, sorry. Um, yeah. And for me, it's, it's uh, very important because I think the most strategy will not work in the future if they don't even work uh, in the past. In the so, past, yeah, it's so <laughs> true. So there's no guarantee that a strategy will work in the, in the future if it's worked in the past, but there is a, a high profitability that it can work. And that's the reason why I'm um, very addicted to, uh, to back tests. And um, yeah, that's the reason why I decided to go this way and create a back tester here for Darwin for the Darwin asset class. Okay, brilliant. So I suppose we're going to start with how we're going to tap into the data, right? And there yeah. are two main sources of data uh, available to users at DarwinX at the moment. One is obviously the Darwin API, and yeah. there is complementary data that supports the Darwin API that we share via the FTP repository. Um, so uh, those are the two main data sources. So I, I suppose in this first round of uh, conversations slash tutorials that we're doing here, uh, we're going to be going into the data acquisition and preparation phases of the backtester. Is that correct? That's right. So let's start. Yeah, 